Good morning. Welcome to the Construction CPA's Coffee Cafe. I am the Construction CPA, Lisa Raich. We are dropping the hammer on cash flow problems so you can build things that matter. And this week's topic is choosing between an S-Corp and a C-Corp for your business. Uh, I made the decision to do this topic because it comes up pretty regularly. Um, one of the Every time there's new um, there's new legislation, there are new changes, there are um, new possible tax plans that are put out there by uh, the government, the the conversation or the idea of which one is better for you, an S or a C comes back into play pretty pretty regularly. Um, there are reasons to do each. Um, there is no, like anything else and much of what we talk about on here, there is no one size fits all. Uh, there there are some in, there are some businesses that it makes more sense to be a C Corp and others an S. So um, we're going to go through kind of the high points of them. And again, you can make the decision whether you want to be a C or an S. Um, I know for from our perspective, we're reviewing a number of the election, the S elections we have for existing clients. Um, and we're really thinking about whether we want to work with them and have them revoke their S elections, because in their particular case, it may actually be more beneficial to be a C corp. So, again, not one size fits all. Um, but you know, let's go through kind of what each one really is, and then you can think about if you are in that situation, which one makes more sense for you, um, you know, and whether or not the current structure that you're in actually makes sense. So. There are a number of different things to kind of think about. So when you get to either a C or an S corporation, you are actually a corporation. So you're an entity of, it's an entity of its own. Um, the idea is that you want to create this. And I kind of, when I refer to clients, I'm like, you want to kind of create a moat between you and your customer. And that moat for you is that entity structure, right? You want to put that between you and the customer. So you want it to be, and it becomes a life of its own. Um, you are not the corporation and the corporation is not you. It's actually an entity of its own. Um, again, in most cases you're going to want to incorporate typically not just for tax purposes, but maybe there might be a legal reason. There might be legal reasonings in your industry, um, why you would want to incorporate in some way. For us, we work with a lot of construction. 99% of our construction clients are incorporated in some sort of legal entity. They are not working as sole proprietors. Again, that is just to legal, that's for legal protections um, so that they can they can protect themselves personally. So again, they have created a, a legal structure. So you're in most cases, having gone to an attorney, you have incorporated with the state that you're in, you have um, organizational documents that um, you have had created. There are more than one of you in that entity, um, more than one owner, you have some sort of operational agreement between the owners as to who does what. There really is, there's legal structure there. Now, that the S Corp, the one we'll talk about in, in just a minute, is one that we find in our business, we tend to have a very large portion of our clients that are, in fact, S Corps. Um, it isn't, it's not the only option, but it tends to be an option many small businesses are going to lean towards as being the right fit for them. Again, that may or may not be the case for you. Um, but it might be a good it might be a good option for you. Now, when we talk about the S and the C Corp, we're also dis we're also going to lump in there the the LLC, the Limited Liability Corporation. And the reason why I want to do that is the LLC does not exist for tax purposes. It's simply a legal vehicle. So you need to choose a way to be taxed. So if you are currently operating as an LLC, electing to be taxed as an S corp or a C corp may in fact be a good option for you. So I want to, just because you are not, you know, just because you are an LLC doesn't mean that this may not be something to, to, to think about. So want to, as we go through these things, I want to think about how this kind of applies to you, even if you are an LLC, because again, um, electing to be an S or C corp may in fact be the best way for you to move forward in your own business. 
So again, what is an S corp? Um, you know, an S corp is basically a pass through entity for tax purposes. So now you've created an entity of its own. It's separate from you as the owner. And on a very high level, what is happening? The income or the loss is passing through to you as the owner or owners pro rata to how much you own the business onto your own personal tax return. So for example, if you have an S corporation, that S corporation on an annual basis files a tax return to the federal government, as well as the state or the local areas where you're located or where you're doing business. From that, there is going to be a profit or loss that comes from that business. That profit or loss then passes to you as the owner, and that profit or loss will show as income or loss to you on your own personal tax return. Now, when I talk about loss, we're not going to talk about loss limitations. We're, we're not even going to discuss that. Just realize that at the end of the day, the business itself is probably is not paying an income tax. You personally are paying the income tax of that entity. Again, it has its benefits to have that pass through status. Um, typically, you're you're limited to 100 shareholders. For the most part, the average business, the ones that we operate with, are going to have one or maybe two owners in it you're not going to run into an issue where you have, if you have more than a hundred you know, shareholders that you wouldn't be able to have an S corp. And again, you need to be a U.S. citizen or resident. So again, S corp is very, very common here in the U.S. Many, most businesses are electing in some way to file as an S corp. Um, again, when you have that pass through, all of the income passes through to you. The liability stays with the entity. You can potentially reduce the self-employment tax that you're paying. So there's, again, tax savings opportunities there. I'm not going to dig deep into that. Just noting that there is the opportunity for some significant tax savings should you elect that way. Um, and so those are benefits of being an S-Corp. Um you're not getting double tax. It's kind of that one-time taxation. There, there are some cons to it. Um, it might be hard for you to raise capital or should you choose to look for investors? Um, you may be paying, you know, with, you, uh, with your salary and your profitable business, you could be at the top bracket for tax purposes. That for some people is a, a really big challenge to get over. Um, there are some restrictions from a legal standpoint and from a tax standpoint of how you are um, able to distribute profits between ownership. Not that that's a bad thing, but there are some limitations there that you need to think about. Like anything else, there are going to be compliance requirements. Again, S Corp is typically the way most we see most businesses go. It's not right. It's not wrong. It just tends to be the um, most beneficial for the average small business owner um, that that has that uh, and you know a smaller business you know if you've got you know uh, five six million dollars in gross revenues you have five or ten employees right that's small business that which is what the average business out there is in fact right not everybody is the size of these large corporations that we see. We most of us out there are working with clients and entities that are small business from that perspective. So again, an S corp could be a good option for you. Um, the C differs from the S in this in the fact that the C itself is a separate entity as well, but that entity itself gets taxed. So whatever profit that entity has at the end of the year, that is where the entity is taxed and the entity pays the tax. Where you start to see people look at whether the C or the S is a better option is now, what is the tax rate of the C Corp? Is it lower than what my potential income tax rate might be? So you start to play that which is more beneficial. And there are a number of calculators out there that you can find on many websites where you can 
calculate whether it makes more sense from a tax perspective for you to be a C versus an S, right? Which style is going to cost you more in overall tax liability? So again, it's not a one size fits all. There are some clients that it is actually a better option to go the route of a C. Now with the C, it you're, you're taxing the entity and not the owners. Um, the issue that comes in with the C Corp is the, what we call the double taxation. And that and that's the one kind of caveat that most people lean on when they look at the C is the entity itself pays tax. And then when the entity distributes profit to you, you as the owner are paying tax on the profits that were distributed to you. Where you need to figure out what makes sense from an overall tax liability or structure for you is in the aggregate, are you paying more tax as an S where all of the profit passes to you and you are taxed at whatever your tax rate is? So again, an individual making a, 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 a comfortable six-figure salary, low six-figure salary, profit of $200,000 to $300,000, that individual could find themselves very easily in the top income tax bracket, which right now is 39%. So from that perspective, like, that's quite costly. Now let's look at it as a C Corp. If you were a C, the entity is paying right now 21%. That could change. Again, there's a lot of um, political changes going on right now. So you could see that rate go up with the next election cycle. That's always on the table. And that's the reason why we go back and we visit this, should I be an S or a C pretty regularly, because these are the types of things that go on the table every time there's a really big um, shift politically, um, because one side or the other is pushing for one rate versus the other. Um, so something to think about. So you're taxed right now at 21%. And then if there are dividends, that are in, in fact distributed to you, then you would be taxed on that at 20%. Now in the aggregate, kind of what do, does that dollar amount look like? What's more expensive than the other? And that's where you want to really think about, should I be a C, should I be an S? So with the C, again, you can have as many shareholders as you want. Um, the C tends to be easier should you want to raise capital, if that's the type of business that you're in. You're gonna have different stock classes, um, you know, there's a preferred stock, the capital stock um, with the preferred, you can in fact make it um, different. You know, the owners are eligible for different types of things. Typically, if there are dividend distributions, the, prefer the preferred shareholders are the first to get their preference or the dividend before the capital and so on. So you can start to get creative um, in how you are um paying back or your owners are able to earn off of your entity. You have the ability to get creative there. Now, again, the cons with that is the double taxation, which we just talked about, but depending about on what your actual real world, you know, distributions are, it may in fact be more um, preferential for you to be in that C versus the S. Again, there's going to be more formalities, um, there may be more regulatory obligations that you have, compliance, compliance that costs money, compliance that needs to be filed. So both of these are going to require you to file certain layers of compliance with the federal and the state agencies, depending on the type of entity that it is, is going to depend on how much you actually have to lean into all of those obligations. So those are things that you want to look at when you are trying to determine whether or not you, in fact, want to go that route. Again, we've talked a little bit about the tax differences, the S Corp, your income is going to pass to the owner on your personal tax return. So again, line one are your wages, and then you get a little bit farther down and they change the return in the last couple of years. I think it used to be line eight. But again, anyway, somewhere on page one, you're going to see that pass through dollar amount come through and that gets included in your overall taxable income. And then the tax that you are in fact, um, you end up paying. Again, it's, you're going to still have tax compliance that you do with the C Corp. But one of the big things that we run into, and especially when clients move to an S Corp, we can't do your personal tax return until you do that S Corp return because we need to know what the profit is that's going to pass through to you. 
Um, again, many cases, what you're going to do, you're moving into that structure. You want to lower your self-employment tax rates. Um, the owner needs to be on payroll for reasonable compensation, but you know, there's some opportunity for tax savings there. Again, with the C Corp, um, right now the rate is 21%. So that is, again, more beneficial than if you're in the top individual tax bracket. You see that and you say, oh, I'm clearly going to save from a tax perspective. But you want to look at also what the dividend rate is um, and then how much in dividends you're taking on an annual basis and so on and so forth. So there are different scenarios that make sense. Um, I would absolutely recommend, you know, touching on one of those calculators. Um, if you don't want to do it, talk to your CPA and like look through, like run one of those tax calculators and see whether it makes you know more sense from a, a tax obligation or a financial perspective um, to be an S versus a C. Um, you know, they, again, there are going to be uh, legal um, and compliance related issues that you'll want to look at. Again, the S Corp, we talked about that. You can't have more than 100 shareholders. But the reality is, for the most part, the average business owner we're working with and, you know, your local CPA is working with is an owner. Your That business has one or two, maybe three owners at tops. Um, so you're not worried about hitting that structure. Um, it's typically a better option for that smaller, closely held business, right? Um, one owner, um, you know, maybe somewhere down the road has um, one of their children. And they, again, maybe they pass it on to their children. It's typically going to be that local small business. Um, the C-Corp does give you a little more flexibility. You want to bring owners in, you want to bring investors in. Do you want to give team members a stake in the business so that they are more engaged? Um, it is a little bit easier to make that as an offering should you be a C-Corp versus the S. So again, looking at that structure, what makes sense for you? Are you going to try to make that, um, you know, it, is that part of your incentive plan for incentivizing team? Well, then you probably want to be in a C versus an S. So again, each one has benefits. Um you know, there's a pro again, pros and cons to each one. You just want to look at your particular cir circumstance and run through what makes sense for you. Um, you, know, you want to just look at your overall business goals. You know, what do you want to do today? What do you want to do in the future? If your plan is in three, four years, you're going to go out to expand and you want investment, then you're most likely going to want to be in a C versus an S. So what exactly makes more sense? tax implications, run that tax calculator, throw some basic numbers in there and see exactly what your obligation in the aggregate would be from a tax perspective. Um, what makes more sense from a tax perspective? That may not be the only way to go, reason to go that way, but it might be an option, something to for you to think about. Um, one of the things I mentioned at the beginning is transitioning between the S and the C. It can be done. Um, there are rules as to, um, for instance, when you do an S election, um, if you choose to revoke that X S election, um, there are rules as to how long that you have to stay in that C status. Should you want to go back to being an S? Um, there are a number of technical and compliance related issues that you want to make sure that you are aware of. Again, if you are going from a C to an S and there are... Um, there are actually, if you have, um, again, profits that haven't been dis distributed to you, again, there are going to be rules related to how that is handled. I'm not going to dig into the minutia of that, but you want to make sure that you understand if you are going from one to the other, what are your overall tax obligations? Um, do you have appreciated assets in that C Corp status? And when you go and you elect to be an S, um, are there potential tax liabilities that you may incur by making that move? Again, something to think about um, may not be the entire reason why you choose that one option, but you want to make sure you understand what your obligations are when it comes to your overall tax liability. So, Again, we've talked a little bit about the different the difference between the two. On a really high level, your S is going to be what you're going to have. Your average small local business is probably going to be an S corp, um, which is okay because you have less than a hundred owners. Typically, is going to be one, two, maybe three owners tops. Um, there isn't a lot of compliance or a lot of 
complexities in the actual organization. There's one type of stock. Um, all owners are treated the same way. It's all the same pro rata re uh, relationship for the owners. You're all taxed on your pro rata share of the profits. It's tax direct, taxed directly to the owner. You get to the C, the C could potentially be double taxed because, because in the C, the entity is taxed and then the owner would be taxed on distributions. You have the ability to have all kinds of different types of shareholders. Those shareholders can have different shares or different types of shares with various layers of preference associated with them as to when and why they would in fact get dividends versus another. Each has their own compliance related obligations that you want to make sure you're aware of. And then the last thing that you want to look at is what would the actual tax obligations of each of these structures be? Which one is more beneficial to you as an individual, to you and your group of shareholders, should you have a small group of shareholders, which makes more sense from that perspective in terms of overall investment? How much is it going to cost you from an overall tax perspective. Um, so, you know, get that, have your CPA, you know, run it. There are a number of tax calculators out there for you to determine what makes, you know, more sense, an, an S or a C um, election. So, you know, in the end, as I've mentioned before, and I talk about this a lot, it's not a one size fits all. You want to look at this, where you are today, your actual entity, not, you know, the guy next door, your entity, where you want to go with it, and then determine which of those structures makes more sense in your particular situation. Each one has benefits. So each has pros, each has cons. You just have to make the decision as to whether or not which one makes the best sense for you and the way that you are structured today. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. Please drop them in the chat. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. And as always, I look forward to seeing you here every Friday morning for the Construction CPAs Coffee Cafe. I look forward to seeing you here next week. Have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.